It is Wednesday, May 4th, 2022. This is another edition of Baseball Today. That is my man, Trevor Plouffe, wearing a football jersey. I am Chris Rose wearing a hat of the Cincinnati Reds because I'm trying to send you guys some good <laughs> luck. I can't take three and 20 five weeks into the season. I know they're good fans can't take it either. But man, it was good to hang out with you last night there at Dodger Stadium. It was. It was great to see your face. You know, we, we battled the traffic down there. I went with my family. You went a little yeah. bit earlier. And then when I got down to the field and saw you, you know, every all the stress alleviated. We had a mm. great time. I walked up and here we are. Logan Webb. What's up, dude? Snap the selfie with him. Um, but yeah, good to be on the field. Again. It's my first game of the season, which is kind of crazy. May 3rd it took me that long to get down there. But um, the smells, the sights, the sounds, they were all there. And then you and I, I mean, shout out to the Baseball Today fans, mm -hmm. the John Boy Media fans who were just coming out, saying what's up to us. And, you know, I forget, you know, L.A. is it's a big sprawling place, but it's one of our, our bigger fan bases. And it was cool to see everyone and, and keep doing that. You see us at the game, come and say hi to us. Um, it was a lot of fun. Yep. We had a great time. It was cool to be able to reconnect with some of the players. Hopefully you'll be seeing a few of them on the Chris Rose rotation in the near future. That's part of the reason we go down there is to, you know, go mingle with them, kind of let them know what's going on and gauge their temperature about wanting to come on the, you know, the show that's really going to grill them, really put them over the coat. <laughs> yeah, it is. I do want to say that I, I felt a little insecure yesterday and I, and it happens when I hang out with my baseball buddies now, because these guys are just, so massive like kurt casali i played with him back in the day huge you know, I, I was like why are you so big and the first thing he said to me go he said where's the rest of you like i've gotten so skinny and these guys are still <laughs> jacked like i get around them and you know my confidence level it takes it it gets taken down a notch maybe i need that i don't know yeah that's true i could hang it, keep hanging out with big fat guys you'll be fine you'll be fine yeah, exactly that's me and you we work out OK, uh, or, or don't, I guess, in some cases, uh, let's get to it. Congratulations to Houston Astros skipper Dusty Baker, the 12th member of the 2000 managerial win club last night. Uh, there are some who will say, well, he, Dusty's been amazing. He's been great. He's well respected. He can't be one of the greats of all time because he hasn't won at all. Shame on those people. He is one of the greats. doesn't matter what these people say. I mean, uh, yeah, you said the 12th member of the 2000 win club. Uh, 10 of those managers are in the Hall of Fame. The other one's Bruce Bochy, who will be in the Hall of Fame. So, like, mm -hmm. Dusty's going to Cooperstown. You know, obviously we know him as a manager now, but looking back at his days as a player, look out a little bit. He had back-to-back -back top 10 MVP finishes for the Dodgers, two All-Star teams, two silver, silver Sluggers. He won a World Series with them. So, I mean, this guy's been around all the greats. I didn't even know this, Chris. As I was, you know, researching a little bit, Dusty was on deck for Hank Aaron's record-breaking home run. How do you not know that? I didn't know that. Oh, my God. It's amazing. Yeah, no, there's, the, there's the great He's shot. He's been around from, everyone. From low first where um, if you play the angle – and you could see Hank Aaron in the background and Dusty's putting his fist up like this. Like, I mean, that was his dude, right? I mean, he, Hank Aaron was his mentor um, when he came to the big leagues. He's also the only manager ever to take five different teams to the playoffs. He is one of nine managers to have won pennants in both the national and the American league. Um, it, it's interesting because in the football world, there's a couple of guys I can think of that I saw coach that are in the hall of fame. They got to Super Bowls. They did not win them. Marv Levy, of course, with the Buffalo Bills. Bud Grant with the Minnesota Vikings. The fact you can get a team there is pretty damn impressive. And there are managers who have won a World Series who do not come close to the resume of Dusty Baker. And there's one other thing that's really important. He is the first black manager to win 2,000 games. And the reason that's so important is because we just celebrated Jackie Robinson Day on April 15th. And one of the clips you will see of Jackie Robinson is actually in his last few days before he passed away. And I believe it's 1972 in Cincinnati where, you know, he's gray at that point. He's not doing great health wise, but he says, I want to see the day where there is a black man coaching in the third base batter's box and coaching in the dugout. That's what I want to see. And so I can only imagine what the emotions were like for Dusty Baker. He probably replayed that 
soundbite in his head last night as he was celebrating with his team. Yeah, he's he's just incredible. I have a my own Dusty story as well. My mom worked at a doctor's office that uh, Dusty frequented, mm-hmm. and uh, first ever autograph I got was a Dusty Baker sign. Oh, cool! Now. I was young and I liked to play ball. So I'm pretty sure I played with that ball and I lived oh. on a hill and I think oh. it probably fell down the hill at one point. I didn't oh. get it, but it doesn't matter, dude, because to this day, I remember it, you know, like, and he didn't have to do that. So, you know, you, you'll hear stories from everybody because he has coached with everybody. He's played with everybody. You're not going to find anybody to say anything bad about Dusty. And let's remember, he took over the Astros in 2020 after that yep. scandal when yep. people were just couldn't even look at the Houston Astros organization. And he made them I, – I think he was a big part of why they're likable again. Like it, like he, And they knew that. They had to bring in someone with a strong reputation mm-hmm. that – you know, could withstand all that. And, and he's the guy and, you know, here we are, it's 2022. I think he, he's on a one year deal. We'll see what happens, but you know, that was a very tough situation to be put in and he has just taken it and ran with it. And I mean, yeah, world series last year. All right. So two other quick things before we move on one, I've had a ton of guys that have played for him and say he was the best manager I ever played up played for because as a veteran, he took care of you. He'd let you know when you got into a city, hey, you're playing on Saturday, okay? Like that. Like, or you're not, you're not working this day. You're cool. I'm not going to come see you at all. So that's big in love in the player that. World. I, I love that. I mean, look, yeah. I didn't have that a lot. Um, it kind of became a thing later on in my career, I guess, as I got to be a veteran. But there's nothing better than when a manager says, you're going to have an off day. Don't even think about, don't even hit BP. Like take it, take a day off. You need that throughout the season. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, maybe there's some guys that don't, I needed that throughout the season. Uh, and it was, it's much better than just showing up to the park and be like, Oh, you're not playing today. It's like, give me the heads up. So, Hey, the night before, maybe I'll go out and have a, a nice dinner exactly. or a glass of wine. Whatever Let me feel do. like, you know, like a regular person again, you know, during the season. So, um, Shout out Dusty. I mean, I don't know, man. There's so many good. We could talk about Dusty this whole episode. Uh, and then the other thing, what are we waiting for to put him in Cooperstown? I never. I understand a player, like player retires at 36. We'll wait five years, whatever. Dusty's in his 70s. Let him enjoy the moment. What? What's the problem? I think it'd be the coolest thing ever to have a guy that's in in the Hall of Fame manage. Like Tony Larusa came back after an absence. But Dusty is so beloved. What is the problem with saying that he can be a Hall of Famer right now? I don't know. There's, there's no problem. He should be. You're right. You're totally right. Like, like a living legend type thing. Like, let the Absolutely. guy. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Hall of Fame. Come on. Yeah. I mean, I, we do it in the NFL. Why isn't Bill Belichick in the Hall of Fame right now? Because he's still coach. Who gives a shit? He's too grumpy. That's why. Well, so whatever. Grumpy. I mean, right. He's got to have a hoodie on his bust when he gets into uh, Canton. Are you a All big right. Belichick fan? I'm sorry. I need to ask that. Um, I was, a, was it Brady or Belichick? Oh, well, no, no, no. It was, but you can't say either or no way. Mm-mm. Oh, you no. can't. Interesting. I asked you a question and you, you s- can't sat on the that fence. one. Oh, okay. No, That's no, no. Interesting. No, you're the, you're trying something here and it's not going to work. <laughs> the yes. predictions of who's going to win. If you were to ask me, are the Patriots going to win the AFC East? If I said, well, I don't know. Cause the Buffalo bills are good. Maybe the Miami dolphins will be that's sitting on the fence. That's sitting on the fence when it comes to predictions. Whatever, dude, we'll talk about this later. We'll yeah. Well, let's move on to the, the, the next show. show. All right. So we're a month into the baseball season. You know what that means? Freshly manicured lawn. Not talking about your favorite baseball stadium. I'm talking about yourself, dude. South of the equator, let Manscaped take care of you. If you go to manscaped.com, use the code baseball today, you're going to get 20% off and free shipping. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code word baseball today. So I want you to follow these instructions. Step one, grab your handy dandy lawnmower 4.0. It is a great one. I used it before my trip to Cabo. I'm telling you, I was feeling fresh feeling clean it's the ultra smooth package step two the crop exfoliator infused with ingredients that soothe clear and keep the skin around that special sensitive area feeling refreshed step three 
the crop gel. See where you're shaving with our unique clear shaving gel just for the groin area. And step four, it's time to shave. The crop shaver was designed for shaving the groin area with supreme confidence. So if you can follow instructions, it'll be very simple. Go to manscaped.com, code word baseball today, 20% off your offer and free shipping. Believe me, you'll be feeling silky smooth and that someone special in your life will say, dude. Twins win for the 12th time in their last 13 games, besting Baltimore. They are 15-9 and nine overall. They have the largest lead of any division winner so far. How long before you officially say, hey, I'm on board the Twins train? I'm always on the Twins train. You I know, know but, that. But you don't always think they're going to be great. So do you sure. think they're, they're going to be legitimately great? Let's just say this. Obviously, I picked the White Sox to be in the World Series. I'm a believer in that team. Now, they have stumbled. The Minnesota Twins um, have just gotten extraordinary pitching. And there's a great article uh, from one of my favorite writers, Britt Garali of The Athletic, and she's talking about the chemistry that the Twins pitchers have found. And this is a new group together. This isn't like... Right people that have come up together. It's, it's Joe Ryan who was traded for it's Chris Archer. Who was afraid and sign. It was Sonny Gray who was traded for uh, Ober has been in the organization. Dylan Bundy. Dylan Chris Bundy Paddock. traded for son, you know, so this is a kind of, I don't want to say it's a ragtag group put together, but it is, you know, they've been having meetings every single day and they, and all of them say, we feel like we've been together forever. They're bouncing ideas off each other. And this is where, you know, gosh, I don't know how many times I've said this on the show, like the tech and like the data and being able to go over it together really helps these pitchers. Um, now, here's where I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shift a little bit. They've been so good. The results have been there, but it kind of feels like a little too good to be true to me. Like, I don't know if this staff is going to lead, you know, the American League in pitching the way they are throughout the year. Um, so I'm on the train. I'm on the train and I'm going to ride it till it bucks me off. Uh, I, I still have the, the White Sox win that division though. I do too. And I, I listen, I want to see somebody give them a run because not only will it be good for baseball fans, obviously I want it to be the Cleveland guardians. Cause that's my team at the same time. Um, last year, the White Sox were not pushed. They weren't pushed at all in the second half of the season. And I think it affected them come playoff time. They didn't have any must win games down the stretch. They had very few series that meant something to them. Um, can it be the Minnesota Twins? I suppose it can be. You know, I think that they're, you know, they have enough really good offensive players to apply pressure to a lot of teams. This this pitching staff is not going to give up under two runs a game like they have in the last 13 games. They're just not. And it might fall off a cliff at some point, right? They've got guys who have been injury prone, have, haven't delivered at times, uh, haven't proven themselves, but we've seen crazier stuff. So if I if I suppose I had to pick somebody in that division to push Chicago, it's Minnesota. Would I be shocked if they're within four games of the White Sox with two weeks to go? Yes, I would be. Chris, they're not. They're already pushing them. They're pushing them around right now, my Twinkies. And I be I have to mention the bullpen's been good too. This isn't just a starting pitcher thing. The article I read was just about the starters and what right. they bring, but bullpen is close too. And I mean, look, when that's how that's how I do my predictions before the season. Like, let's talk about pitching. Like, who has the pitching? And right now, I mean, they're they're pitching. And they traded their best reliever to San Diego. They did. Who San Diego's been reaping the benefits? Yep. Uh, but Paddock's been great for them. So it's like has been. I don't think anybody in their starting rotation has an ERA over three one five. Outside of Sonny Gray, and he's only made two starts and has been injured, but he's getting close uh, to coming back. All right, uh, well, let's. Stay I do want to say yes. One reason that Britt did mention, like they've been so successful, or one of the reasons is they pitch up and in. They're not striking out a lot of people, but they're getting people uncomfortable. Ah, the uncomfortable word. Yeah, so I, I mean, love like, the uncomfortable. You gotta word. be. You, you gotta be able to do that and. I really hope it continues. You know, I am a big believer in some of the starters. Like I, I believe Joe Ryan's going to be like a guy guy. Um, and you know, my boy's arch, I'm happy. He's, you know, found some success there. Um, like I said, just maybe seems a little bit too good to be true right now. Uh, let's stay in the American league central. Congratulations to Bobby Witt jr. With his first show Homer, by the way, did you see what happened 
Harrison Bader t- took the ball. Obviously, he didn't know that it was Witt's first homer. He threw it up into the stands, which, of course, in Kansas City ends up at being in the fountain. So oh, he threw ball. it in the fountain? Yeah. So now it's all waterlogged. The ball, his first home run ball. Dude, well, you told me yesterday at the game, like, oh, Bobby Witt, his first home run. I said, that's his first home run? I know, it's May, right? It's May 3rd. Well, and, uh, you know, it's okay. Well, it kind of gets us to more of a, um, I don't want to say alarming trend, but maybe a surprising one with as many good young players that have started to come up, right? Witt Jr., his OPS is in the low 600s. Kelnick is like 500. Julio Rodriguez, who just hit his first homer the other day, uh, is either in the low sixes or high fives. Joe Adele just got sent down. So how should teams handle these young guys when they're such big time prospects, but they, they aren't making it yet. I think you have to go case by case. Um, the way I would handle it is if a guy, I think of the generic way I would handle it is if you had a big time prospect, first of all, these guys get blown up um, by all sorts of different publications who, you know, cover the minor leagues and they become kind of not household names, but in the baseball world, we already knew about Bywood Jr. We knew about Julio Rodriguez. We knew about Kelsey. You know, we have a podcast. It's called Farm to Fame. And so you know, Kelsey and Pete do a great job letting us know who these kids are before they, they arrive. Bl- they blow them up and people get so ready for these guys. If a, if a veteran struggles at all in the big leagues, they're like, let's bring our prospect up. He's going to save the organization. It's like, no, man, like that is not the way baseball works. Very few times do guys come up and just have immediate success, immediate sustained success. Sometimes guys will come up, yes, like the adrenaline's hot. You, you're just crushing balls because like you just have this extra little energy with you. That goes away. It's hard to have sustained success early on in your career. What I would do with these guys, if, if say the Royals, for instance, um, it's different with contending teams. You don't have as long That's of a thing. leash. You don't have as long as a leash. But what I would do is I would tell these guys, don't look at your stats. I don't care. You're good enough to play in the big leagues. We're going to give you 150, 200 bats. I would even say that to them. But in my mind, I give them 150 to 200 bats. And I'd say, don't worry about stats. Go out and be yourself. Okay. If they continue to struggle, then you have to have the hard conversation with them and you need to go work on some stuff. Um, Some guys, Chris, can handle being, having some failure. Uh, For a lot of the guys that come up, these superstar prospects, it might even be the first time they've ever struggled on a baseball field. Like, you know, for most guys, it's pro ball. You get in the pro ball and you've never had hardships in baseball. You've always been the best player. You get in the pro ball and then you struggle. These top prospects, most of the time, breeze their way through the minor leagues. Then you get to the big leagues. It's your first time ever struggling. You have some crazy thoughts in your head, dude. Like, am I just not good enough? Like, I don't understand. So you really have to communicate with these young guys and tell them, this is what you got and, and just lay out a plan for them. I think that eases the stress because you will get stressed well, as a young player when you're failing. I think you that's what think, you have to do. You really have to communicate with these guys. You don't think that Kelnick's feeling stress last year? He, of he course came he up is. and he was horrible. He got, even though I was super excited, I was like, oh, dude, dog, he's going to be great. I was dead wrong on that out of the gate. Got sent down, came back up, did some nice things, you know, played all the way through that final weekend his numbers are God awful at this point through a month, you know, Mitch Hanniger has been banged up. He came back. He had one at bat, got injured again. At some point, he's going to be ready. At some point, Lewis is going to be ready. And at some point, Jared Kelnick is not going to be one of the three best options out there. And you, and you have to explain that to him and and you have to say, he's going to need a pat on the back and you have to tell him you're a big part of our future. Okay. But right now you have to work on some things. You just got to be honest with guys. I got sent down in 2011 and I was so fucking mad. Chris, I punched a hole in the wall, like right next to garden Hire's office. I was so mad. I felt like they weren't communicating with me and our assistant GM came down at the time. And I said, look, am I part of like the plan here or what? Cause if I'm not part of the plan here, like get me out of here. I said, I know I can be a big leaguer. They didn't communicate that well enough to me. Finally, I had to ask them and like, of course, you're part of the plan. Like we like this is what you need to work on. Da, 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 da. After that, I felt much better. And I was part of the plan. I ended up playing, you know, several years there as a starter. So you just really got to communicate. And for me, I needed a pat on the butt th- or a pat on the back. I think that Kelnick probably is going to need that too. Um, which hand did you punch? 
with right 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 hand i put right through the freaking drywall i was surprised i was dumb but i was surprised that i went through it right hand you're supposed to do it with your other hand dummy i was dumb i was pissed bro i was so mad so did mad. you seriously were you like get me out of here if you're not gonna yeah really you'll trade me in the right fucking now sort of deal i was just because i'd already been up and down a bunch of times dude and like I had nothing left to prove at the AAA level. And I, I got sent down for someone I didn't think was better than me. And mm. um, I mean, dude, it's your career. And like, there are, you're there. And I was there, but you want to, you know, it's the big leagues. You want to stay. Yeah. And you get sent up and down like that. It, it, it hurts. But if you communicate, and that's what we always talk about, you know, that's all players want. Front office managers, just communicate with us. That's what you have to do with these young kids too. Know what I'm here to tell you about? My friends over at Muggsy Jeans, head on over to Muggsy.com, code word today, get 10% off your entire order. Yes, I have told you how much my wife, Michelle, loves the Muggsy Jeans that I ordered because you know what? I went out of my comfort zone. I didn't get blue, bluer, bluest. If you're traditionalist, it's fine. They've got those. I went charcoal gray. They look great. They add to my repertoire and my wardrobe, and they feel fantastic. Now, listen. If you're a little heavier than you want to be, it's okay because the jeans expand with you. They got this special material that I don't know how they scientifically do it, but it grows with you. So if you're a few pounds, I don't know, heavier than you want to be, it's okay. And then if you're able to get back in shape, that's cool too because they don't look too baggy. And by the way, if you have a few extra pounds, it's not a big deal. Like it happens. It's not the worst thing in the world, but you want to feel good and you want to feel confident. So go order your Muggsy jeans. And the thing I love most about them is that they got a vast array of colors, okay? So if you want to go and be a little extra spicy and get something that's like green or red or yellow, whatever color, they've got that for you. So go to Muggsy.com. The code word is today. You're going to get 10% off your entire order. You will feel sexy. You will look sexy as well. Uh, Max Scherzer communicated last night, even though he was not pitching the back end of the doubleheader sweep of the Mets over the Braves. He communicated with the home plate umpire. You suck. And so Max got tossed. It's the second time in his career he has been ejected, both times as a voyeur. He wasn't even pitching in the games. Um, Who is the most most intense player you ever laced it up with? You know, I was going through some past rosters. I had a few names in mind. And then one I I realized is probably the right answer. Um, and, and people are probably going to be surprised because his outward demeanor isn't like this. It's Justin Morneau. Uh, he does a great job calling games for the twins right now on TV. And he's very kind of like laid back and just explains everything the right way. But as a player, he worked and worked and worked. And when he wasn't having success, dude, I saw the dude break a metal handrail going up to our clubhouse with a wooden bat. Like, just broke it down. I think he ended up hurting his wrist when he did that. Uh-oh. Uh, but, like, if if he was feeling – if he wasn't feeling good at the plate, he'd spend – I swear, Chris, he spent two hours in the cage just hitting till he couldn't hit anymore. Like, he, he was so competitive. He knew he was – he knew he was a guy on the field. And when he wasn't producing, like, he couldn't think about anything else than getting back to being that player. Uh, and he brought that, I mean, he showed that to me, like the work and he even, he, he got it's into a, me a few times when he, when he, when I, he thought I wasn't putting enough work in calling me ooh. aside saying like, Hey, we, they could have sent you out. You're not working hard enough. This is what you need to do. He took me under his wing and kind of showed me the way to do it, man. And, um, just that underlying intensity, like I'll never forget it. Um, that's interesting. Such a nice Canadian dude. Yeah. Soft-spoken. Had All those nice... Canadians, dude, they have that underneath. Like uh, all the ones that I put, Corey, Corey Kosky, same thing. Yeah. That's he's in, I never played with him, but he's intense also. Yeah. Votto. I think Matt stairs is probably the calmest Canadian ever. And we all know the reason why there. Okay. Yeah. Offline. Offline. Fun dude. Fun one. Matt stairs. Great one. Um, just as a fan, Albert Bell. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, he's a different stratosphere, right? Yes. I mean, he looked so mad and he was one of the great enigmas in the history of baseball. Really smart dude, super smart guy, Ooh. but just couldn't control his anger. So back when he was coming up through the Cleveland system in the late eighties, we kept hearing all these amazing stories about back then he was Joey Bell. And you know, there wasn't any social media. 
There weren't any cell phones to record stuff. But you kept hearing, uh, he had another incident in Colorado Springs. Apparently, one time he took a baseball bat to all the urinals in Colorado Springs and broke them. Like, do you know how hard it is to break a urinal? You have any idea? Insane. How much strength you have to have to take a baseball bat and break a fucking urinal? This is in the minor leagues, right? Yeah, that was the the minor minor leagues. (laughs) Minor leagues will piss you off, baby. I could see how someone would want to break a urinal, pick up a toilet, and break it. Yeah. So I remember I saw uh, I saw Albert a few years ago out at a spring training game, and I just walked up and introduced myself, and he was like, "Oh, I know who you are, Chris." Couldn't have been nicer. You know, he wow. was he was the guy right in the middle of that lineup when Cleveland had its baseball renaissance, 94, 95, 96. And then he ended up signing with the White Sox for five years and 55 million. I was working at CNNSI at the time. It was breaking news. I had to hop up on the desk and I was like, Albert Bell is signed with the White Sox for five years, <laughs> 55 million dollars. That's pretty good. Albert Bell's a, that's a good choice. But I have another one too. I don't think I was ever actually teammates with him but like spring training same organization grant balfour we gotta we gotta mention australians and we mentioned intensity in baseball yep he was at, look at liam Hendricks. what he does on the mount he learned it from grant yeah uh, well balfour or at least was influenced great. when he used to come in in oakland and that place in the outfield went nuts it all be banging their heads and stuff that that was great stuff speaking of great our last story the amazing gesture in toronto last night yankees on the road win their 11th straight aaron judge a monster home run fan out there mike lanzalita Lan- wait lanzalota i apologize mike he's a toronto fan he's promised this young kid nine-year-old Derek rodriguez who's wearing a judge t-shirt and everything hey if a ball gets up here i'm giving it to you gets the aaron judge baseball hands it to the kid Kid doesn't know this guy at all, jumps into his arms and gives us one of those special feel good moments. It's amazing, dude. I was just at the ball game with Teddy last night, as you know, and like he had his glove ready to catch a foul ball. It's so special for these kids, you know, and especially for him, who's an Aaron Judge fan named after Derek Jeter. Like he went up there in those seats to catch an Aaron Judge homer. Okay. And this guy to, to get it and just immediately, you know, have the wherewithal. There's my guy to give it to him. And then yes, the reaction is just so pure. And well, that's the thing. It was the reaction. And happy. Yeah. I mean, let's, let's give Mike some credit, obviously, but I think any of us would have done that. Right. Like what does an Aaron judge baseball mean to a 40 year old grown up man? Look, we might've done that. There's a lot of fans that might not have done that. So you Possibly. have to really give credit to this guy and okay. like, I teared up at this video last night. Okay, I mean, yes. maybe that's because I'm a parent. Like, once you're a parent, you start crying all the time. It's like, oh, yeah. I don't know what happened. I cry in like yeah. movies and shit. Like, yeah, it happens. This, it happens. this got me. I showed it to Olivia this morning and like, same, same reaction. You just, you put yourself in like uh, his father's situation. You see your son just like so happy. There's nothing you want in the world more than your son or daughter to be as happy as this kid was. So, Mike, what two a great thumbs moment. up. Two thumbs oh, up, brother. Gosh, yes. All right. Real quickly, anything on John Boy today? Yeah, we have our all JM baseball episode. Uh, so we we every month we go, we give these guys pedals and you want to complete the flower. Last year, the only player to do that was Vlad Guerrero Jr. So um, yeah, every month we check who was the best in this month. Okay. And then cool. we go May and April, who was the best in those two months? And we go, it's an all encompassing award. It's awesome. Uh, we got a little little feisty because you know we we view the game differently, especially Jimmy and I. We view the game a little bit differently. Um, but it's a good episode. That's out today. Okay. Uh, still the Mud Grant um, with the Padres analyst. He's great, wonderful storyteller. Tyler Glass now coming out tomorrow. So nice. he's always excellent. People love him with great reason. He'll Grant Grant's on. story with the. Fax machine is just something else. Oh, the so. telegram? The telegram, the, sorry. Yeah, the telegram about machine. how he found how he found out he was drafted was by That's telegram. Insane. It's it happened in 1981. As like I said, already, he, yeah. Yeah, he he had already found out, but he didn't get the official <laughs> word from the team until he got a telegram a couple of days later. 
like mud. This is 1912, not 1912, 1981. What were people doing in 1980? Like, let's figure it out, people in 1980. How about pick up the phone? You could I call phones. long distance back then. I did it all the time as a kid. Might have caught, you know, these, these organizations are looking to save a little scratch. Yeah, I guess bro. so, right? <laughs> all right. Uh, for our outstanding producer, Dan Rourke, that's my man, Trevor Plouffe. I'm Chris Rose. We'll see you Thursday on Baseball Today.